This week we're going to take a look at a sub $300 CNC that has just come out and see if this is something that you could use inside of your shop. Welcome back to the Make or Break Shop. I'm Brandon, and here at the shop we like to make things, but we know that breaking them is part of the process, and that especially is true with CNCs. If you've ever used a CNC, you're going to break something. So having a smaller CNC like this to learn on usually is a pretty good thing, because then you're not breaking something super expensive. So this is the Ortur Alfaro, Alfaro, I don't know how to pronounce it, CNC engraver. So in the CNC world, these are pretty low in terms of price. So these are like two to $300. There's usually something around that. There's different models throughout the year and this is a brand new one that's coming from Ortur, which you might be familiar with uh, their lasers. So I actually have a laser engraver I definitely recommend. But let's do a full review of this guy and see if this is something that could work for you. So there's gonna be timestamps down below for the full structure of this review. First, we're gonna put this thing together, then we'll get into all the features, the pros, the cons, and finally, my recommendation at the very end. First, get this thing back into the box and put it together. Let's jump into this guy. We're gonna have some extruded aluminum. This is probably gonna be for your base plate. Several bits, it looks like. We've got some threaded rod, more rod, some more extruded aluminum stuck up in there. Lots of bolts, some other stuff, tools and some zip ties in our stepper motors. Then, whoa, and our entire so that's the spindle, as well as we already have the stepper motor attached to it. So that's handy, we don't have to connect all of that. Extrusion. Uh, one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is there are no plastic pieces. And some more rods. And finally, the controller is inside of there. This is nice, this was external before, and so this isn't a little bootleg screen to control it. So that's, um, we definitely didn't have that before. And this is, looks like the box is 3D printed, so it's not like super robust or anything. Um, there was no paper, so I'm guessing that the instructions are going to be on this little USB drive. So let me go plug this in and see if I can print these out. All right, so we're back from the computer. Uh, there were a couple pages that kind of diagram how this thing goes together, so this shouldn't be super difficult. All right, so let's put this thing together. So let's do a quick build montage. So now that we've got the base mostly assembled, now we're gonna go ahead and make the rest of this guy. Just gonna flip over like this. It seems pretty rigid, so I think we're gonna be good. All right, so we've got this mostly put together. So uh, one thing that I don't think the other one had are these toggle switches, so you can actually adjust everything up and down. Overall, um, this thing is solid metal. All right, so let's wire up the electronics and then we can actually start testing this thing. So let's talk about positive and negatives just in terms of the actual assembly. Uh, it says it takes like 20 minutes and it didn't take 20 minutes. It took a lot longer. I actually did several things wrong, so I had to kind of rebuild it, build it over again. In the ones I've tested in the past, usually like these brackets are plastic, even though these are extruded aluminum. Overall, I mean, the thing is rock solid. So this is actually a pre-production unit. So they're actually sending me uh, the finalized version. And so I can do an updated review once that is live. You can check it out up there if it's already done. Okay, so once everything gets assembled, then the kind of the next step is uh, how are you actually going to mount the pieces that you're planning on cutting? So this is actually going to be a test piece. This is way big really for what this thing is, but it's going to work. They give you uh, just a little bolt that can slide in and then you have these actual little metal guys and then you just drop on a little wing nut and this is how we're going to be able to clamp things into place. So we'll need something else to kind of hold the back in place. I've got these. These are just little metal staircases that are from the X-Car that I've got, but you could just use a piece of wood on the back. I'm basically something that can hold this down. 
So it's not the best work holding, but it's gonna work for the most part. Let's get it working with the computer. So it's got a USB port. So this is Inventables Easel. Uh, it comes with some software that you can use, but this is just easier. So I'm gonna go through the machine setup just so you can kind of see how it works. Um, you're gonna select other gerbil. You're gonna set the machine, machine type, other gerbil. Model is gonna be other. Uh, motion controller, none of this really matters. Uh, it's gonna be Arduino. I'm just selecting the smallest. All this does is gonna change just our work area. But actually this thing is gonna be even smaller than that. So we'll have to um, make sure our artwork isn't too big. This doesn't really matter. Spindle, um, this one we do wanna make sure. So we wanna make sure we have our spindle set to other and then I think the max is 10,000 and confirm. So now what's nice is then you can just bring in artwork um, this software, if you've never used Eatle, is really, really easy. We're gonna test this guy out. I am gonna put this right in the middle. The only reason I'm doing that is I'm just gonna have the zero point be right in the middle of the artwork. So then when I zero the machine, it's just right in the center. So it comes with a couple different bits. I think they're the same one. So it's gonna come with a collet. What this does is it allows you put this in and it also lines it up and makes it center. So this is gonna drop in right down here. So now we're gonna zero this out, basically right to where it is touching, just barely touching. Turn the spindle on, and hopefully we're not gonna break anything. All right, so this just finished up and I was like, did I send something wrong? Cause that obviously isn't the entire picture, but I totally forgot this is only an eighth inch bit. So actually the design was way too small for it to show up. So we are going to make it a little bit bigger and then restart this guy. So it's getting a little bit of chattering and I'm only running it at 30 inches a minute. So I'm gonna slow it down some. All right, that seems to be running a little bit better. All right, so you can see I definitely messed that up. And that was because uh, it couldn't run any further this way, so I zeroed the thing out. Also, this is a uh, an upcut bit, so you're gonna get the frame like that. But, I mean, it's definitely cutting in there, and it's not jittering uh, around, so it's actually looking fairly good, obviously, if I don't mess it up and go the wrong direction. <laughs> So it turned out pretty nice. Again, we used an upcut bit, so that is why you're getting all that fraying. Um, you can just sand that off or use a different type of bit. But in terms of the actual carving, uh, it's pretty good. It's definitely a lot slower than the bigger machines, but you're still gonna be able to get a good kind of final result. Uh, it's just gonna take a good bit more time. Let's actually compare this to some other machines that are out there. So actually the first one I'm gonna compare to, ugh, is this AlphaWise C10 maybe? Actually, I forget the name of it, but I did a review of it right over there. But basically this was kind of the comparable unit and this was kind of around the same price point. This is about 250 as well. First off, probably the uh, most obvious is the spindle. Um, so this guy is a good bit smaller uh, and even the bit that it gave you um, wasn't the best. So even like the bits that you're getting are gonna be pretty good. Uh, the next big thing uh, that you're gonna notice is this assembly. So like I said, while we we're putting this together, this is solid aluminum. There's actually, there's nothing on here that isn't metal outside of like the electronics and the wiring and all that kind of stuff. But this is actually 3D printed so you can see the print lines, which is okay, but um, in the video I even mentioned, like you can see it buckle. Uh, while it's cutting. So the fact that this is 3D printed, and this is all metal, that is a huge difference. And then even the rods that everything is on, so whether it is uh, the rods in the X-axis as well as the ones in the Z, are way thicker than what's on here. So you're not gonna get quite that flex that you're getting. Uh, you normally wouldn't get the flex. Ugh, I've actually had this guy tightened up. This thing is way heavier ugh, than this guy. 
in my non-scientific measurement. I'm gonna say this is about two times heavier, but even you can see these brackets on the sides. These are like a hard plastic, but then on the actual frame, you've got this big plate of aluminum that's securing everything in place, as well as this front and this back. These are solid pieces of aluminum versus having the rail. Another big difference is actually on the back. This motherboard is just exposed. It doesn't look that great, and it's gonna be really easy for the stuff to get pulled out. Uh, this one, all of that is within its own metal casing, and then it actually has a wiring harness. So not only is it a lot cleaner, but as this thing is moving around, it's gonna be pretty easy to get one of these nicked and get caught. This unit is actually discontinued. They had an updated version that had some of these features, but this guy is a good bit nicer than this one. So let's talk about the one feature that this one has over this one, this. So this is a laser module. So you could take this guy out in the spindle, drop it in, and then um, you could switch up the software and then you could use this as a laser engraver. Now you don't have that option. I did ask them if that was something that you can currently do. I don't know if it's going to be something you can do in the future because they also sell this laser engraver, which I also have done a full review of right up there. I really enjoy this guy. It's a diode laser. It is just going to engrave. And I actually think this is a pretty good combo between this and this. So the CNC, you're going to be able to cut the wood out, throw it over to the laser. You're going to be able to engrave it. So there are a lot of differences between a CNC router and a laser. Probably the biggest one is if you want to cut anything, more than likely you're going to use this guy. This guy can cut, but it's going to be super thin paper or cardstock, but this is a much bigger work area. You can laser engrave. The engraving is a lot more exact than probably what you could do with a router. It's just a different look overall. One thing this can do that this can't is you can actually do two and a half and 3D carving. So examples like topographic maps as well as like a relief cuts. So if you are interested in this guy, we actually have some links down below, including a giveaway that we are running for the next few weeks. This will actually be the full version of the unit, not just the pre-production one. So be sure and check that out if you want to enter to win. So because of the limited size on this guy, you're really not gonna be able to carve out big stuff. So we're gonna do just kind of an example uh, ornament, which I think could be a good option if you guys are wanting to batch out things, especially to sell like on Etsy. So this is actually gonna be a two-stage operation. And so I need to take this bit out first because we're gonna use a little tiny tiny 60 degree V carve bit. Now we can run our next pass. All right, so this thing just finished up and I actually forgot to uh, readjust the thickness. So it was gonna keep cutting too far. So this was about to pop out anyway. But you can see this thing actually did a pretty good job of making a Baby Yoda that is actually cut out. I definitely had to uh, adjust the depth of cut. So it's probably half of what I would normally run it. And then the speed was probably a quarter of what I've normally run it. So this thing is going to take a good bit more time, but um, you still are gonna be able to get results. It's just gonna take a little while to get to them. So this also comes with this little pad, and I think this is actually gonna be updated uh, so it's not just 3D printed, but it gives you control of the machine. So I haven't gotten super deep into it. You can definitely do a few things, uh, like move is probably the biggest one. And the way they do it is hold it down. And then you let it go and it keeps going. It's kind of like a boat almost, which is the way it's set up. So I let it go. And then it's gonna keep moving. You can just tap it once. Then let's see what else we got. You can do the spindle control. So you can actually set your min, mid, and a max on it. And then somehow you can get it to connect to Wi Fi. I think you can control it uh, with computer on a network. I just haven't been able to get that to work yet. And again, this is early software. So I think that's something they're gonna add in. For the most part, I'm still just running everything directly from the computer, um, just with a USB cable like I've done before. So I'm seeing that I didn't put this on completely even. Um, I actually could shift this over this way just a little bit. But basically you're gonna be able to cut the entire width of this. That's what I wanted to figure out. And then on the Y, 
That's about as far that way you can go. So you're looking at about four and three quarters and then the whole width of this a foot. All right, so now let's kind of determine the max height of the Z axis. Um, I've kind of pushed this bit as far in as it can go, but this is gonna vary depending on your bit size. And so it can go all the way about an inch and three quarters. So actually this is pretty good clearance for the machine this size. So now let's actually do a speed test. So a few things you notice is it takes it a while to ramp up to full speed. There's the full speed right there. But it takes it a good bit to slow all the way back. It can move, but it still is pretty slow. Like when you saw the carbs earlier, uh, it definitely runs a good bit slower. It's, not, it's never gonna be able to get to top speed just because it can't go from zero to 60 in 0.2 seconds. Pros and cons to this machine. So on the pro side of things, the full metal construction is probably the biggest takeaway for me. So you actually are gonna be able to use this to actually cut things out, which I was always nervous with, even with really thin plywood like this, um, you would have some buckling. It wasn't the great, especially when these units in the past uh, this actual z-axis wasn't metal and so it would flex another pro is this little guy is actually really useful just this touchpad especially just to jog this thing around um, it's got an app and Wi-Fi but I haven't been able to connect it and I think that's just because it's a pre-production model but um, just the fact that you can move it around with this is a big plus from what you've had in the past and more than likely you're still gonna run everything from a computer and have it connected by USB to actually mill everything out Another pro is the spindle is a good bit bigger, so you still are gonna be able to do some pretty real stuff with this, it's just gonna take a while. And then uh, the electronics on the back, having a full casing uh, is really nice that you just don't have wires hanging out, uh, especially with these wiring harnesses, um, things are a lot cleaner than what they have been in the past. So when you compare this to a bigger machine, like an X-Carve or a Shape Oko, um, you can't run it nearly as fast because it is screw driven and these stepper motors don't turn as quick. You saw kind of a speed test earlier, the belt drives go way, way faster. and then Especially when you get up to like linear rails, um, you really can move. You're only gonna really be able to cut soft stuff. So wood, I think they say you probably can cut metal, but I don't know. It, it would be pretty hard to cut metal at any speed that would make sense. You'd probably have to slow it way, 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 way down. And then you might run into actually messing up your bit because you're going so slow and your chip load is not gonna work. And then probably my biggest con is you don't have an ability to add a laser head like you did to the older machine to it. It would have been nice if you had some way you could retrofit that spindle, which I bet you can. It's just not built directly in. So I don't think they have power control to the laser. Maybe there'll be an update in the future that'll let you do that, but that's something you're not gonna get with this one. So what is my recommendation for this guy? I think if you are getting into CNC um, or you're wanting to batch out some small things like these and the two to $300 price point isn't a super big deal for you, I think this could be a good option for you. You are gonna be able to get products. They're just gonna take a lot longer to cut out. But I think the big thing is, is you're gonna learn a lot about the CNC. You saw I was making mistakes earlier, like I forgot the zero thing. This will be a good machine to kind of learn the fundamentals of CNC and to kind of see what you want when you step up to a bigger machine. So Something else this one doesn't have on the pre-production, but the newer ones do, is an emergency stop, which is really handy, and I think it's like right here. I've just used this on-off switch in the back, and that has worked fine as well. So what do you guys think? Is this something that would work in your shop? If you have questions about this unit, leave it down below. Be sure and check the comments to see if someone else has answered your question. I'll be down in there as well. Now, like I said, this is not a laser engraver. Wartour has a really nice laser engraver that I recommend that is also in the two to $300 price point. I did a full review on that. You can check it out up there. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. All right, see you guys.